2012 Canadian Open Mathematics Challenge, Part C. Let f at x is equal to x squared, g at x is 3x minus 8. Find the values of f at 2 and g at f at 2. f at 2 plugged in 2x squared would be 2 squared, which is 4. g at f at 2, well f at 2 we just figured out was 4, so that's really just g at 4. g at 4 plugged into the g at x formula would be 3 times 4 minus 8, which is 12 minus 8, which is 4. Part B, determine all values of x such that f at g at x is equal to g at f at x. Okay, so f at g at x, g at x is 3x minus 8, and they're saying that is equal to g at f at x, and f at x is x squared. So plug this into the f at x formula, and that would be 3x minus 8 all squared, and this would be 3 times x squared minus 8. So that's 9x squared minus 48x plus 64 is equal to 3x squared minus 8. So that is 6x squared minus 48x plus 72. Divide through by 6 and you get x squared minus 8x plus 12. And I think this factors uh, nicely x, x, 6 and 2 minus minus. So therefore x is equal to 2 or x is equal to 6. Let h at x be 3x minus r. Determine all values of r such that f at h at 2 is equal to h at f at 2. Okay. So f at h at 2. So h at 2 using that formula would be 3 times 2 minus r. And h at f at 2, well, that's going to be that formula, so that's going to be 2 squared. Yeah. Okay. So then we got to go back and substitute what's in here into here. So that's going to be 6 minus r all squared. And h at 4 would be 3 times 4 minus r using that formula. So now we expand 36 minus 12r plus r squared is equal to 12 minus r. So therefore, this is r squared minus 11r plus 24 is equal to 0. And does this factor? Yeah, sure. r, r, 8, 3, minus, minus. So therefore, r is equal to 3 or 8. We fill a 3x3 three three grid with zeros and ones. We score one point for each row, column, and diagonal whose sum is odd. For example, the grid on the left has zero points, and the grid on the right has three points. Fill in the following grid so that the grid has exactly one point. No additional work is required. Many answers are possible. You only need to provide one. All right. So let's explain this question first. Whenever you add up a row, column, or diagonal, Look at the sum. If the sum is odd, you get a point. All right, great. So let's try this one here. This first row, the sum is 2. Second row, the sum is 2. Third row, the sum is 2. Uh, first column, the sum is 2. The sum is 2. The sum is 2. Diagonal, the sum is 2. This diagonal, the sum is 2. So all of these sums are 2s. All of those numbers are even so there's no odd so there's zero points here the only way you can get a point is if any of the sums are odd let's try the next one here two two three three two two and the diagonals are one and two so how many odd sums did we get one two three so that's why 3 is the point total for that. And they tell you that. The left grid has 0 points, and the grid on the right has 3 points. I just illustrated how that works. Okay, so now what they want you to do is fill in this with zeros and 1s so that this grid has exactly 1 point when you did the whole, the whole you know, sum game like I did up there. All right, 
well, okay. Let's um, let's fiddle around with this. So here are the full set of such grids that have exactly one point. And I'll illustrate how this works. So the first one, for example, these are the sums zero. Um, 2, 2, 2, 2, 0. The diagonals are 1 and 2. So as you can see, there's only one uh, sum that's odd, and therefore this has one point. And very similarly, you can see that all the other grids have the same kind of story. This one, the sums are 2, 2, 0, 2, 2, 0. The diagonals are 2 and 1, and therefore there's only one sum that's odd and therefore this also has one point and all the other ones are similar in that they would calculate to one point so you just have to fiddle around and try to find at least one of these that would give you a grid that matches the conditions of the question determine all grids with exactly eight points all right so we were looking at the sum of three rows three columns and two diagonals, right? And that, therefore, would be how many sums? It would be eight sums. And they're saying eight points. So that means all eight of these have to be odd. All eight sums have to be odd in order for you to get eight points. Okay. All right, so that's the first part. So we are going to figure this out in terms of two types of scenarios. So here's my grid and the first scenario basically and the second scenario all involved uh, a fundamental difference of what's in the middle so in this one the first one the middle value is going to be zero and here the middle value is going to be one and then we will talk about both all right so here we go okay so let's discuss this now so we are going to put in a few letters to represent some numbers. Now, we have to make all the, the sums odd, right? So the sums can be either 1 or 3. Those are the only odd sums that are possible because 0 is an even number, believe it or not, and 2 is also an, an even number. Okay, so that means that since the middle one is zero, that we only have uh, two numbers to add because whatever numbers in here, whatever number goes in this box, is going to be added to a to get the diagonal. The zero will not contribute to the sum, and a plus that has to equal one. It can't equal three because the only numbers we can put in are one or zero. So therefore, I'm going to call that a bar because a plus 0 plus a bar has to equal 1, like that. So what that really means is that we are going to have very limited choices as to what these can be. So I'll call this c bar, b bar, and d bar, whatever ones that are opposite. So for example, uh, b plus b bar is also 1. And uh, therefore, you know, if B is 0, B bar would be 1. If B bar, if B was 1, B bar would be 0 like that. Okay. So, let's add up all these, the sums, all these rows, columns, and diagonals. It would be A plus B plus C. and plus a bar plus b bar plus c bar now before we talk about that let's just continue with what i was doing here we concluded that you know a plus a bar is one b plus b bar is one c plus c bar is equal to one right when you add that diagonal it has to be one in order to for it to become odd and then similarly d plus d bar is also going to have to be one because there's no way it could be a three and we must get it to be odd. 
in order for it to have eight points. So if you just take this one, this one, and this one, and add them up, you get this. And that is equal to three, because this is one, this is one, and this is one. So if we have a plus b plus c, and then we have a bar plus b bar plus c bar, and that equals three, then what are the possibilities? It could either mean that this is zero and this is three, or this is one and this is two, or this is two and this is one, or this is three and this is zero. So in all of those four scenarios, you'll notice that one sum is even and one sum is odd. For example, this is even, that's odd. And similarly, the other ones is also odd, even, even, odd, odd, even. So that means that a plus b plus c is even or odd, and the other one is even or odd. But there can never be a scenario where both are odd. So both a plus b plus c and a plus b plus c bar are not odd. And we need everything to be odd in order for you to get eight points. So for example, you would need this sum to be odd, and you would need this sum to be odd. But one is going to be even and one is going to be odd. And therefore, since this clearly shows me that both cannot be odd, this scenario has no solutions. The scenario where zero is in the middle. Okay, so we turn our attention now to where there's a one in the middle. And we use the same sort of logic, A, B, C, D, like that. And this time, you'll notice that there's a 1 in there. So if I put some number here, and that means A plus 1 plus A plus 1 plus A has to be odd. So it has to be either 1 or 3. Correct? So similarly, I put the C uh, and the D and the B like that. And we notice that everything has to be odd. So that means that the top row A plus B plus C has to be odd in order for this to get eight points. And then the first uh, column, which is A plus D plus C, that also has to be odd. So if you compare these, that basically means that b is equal to d. And you can you know, justify that with examples, just in case you're not 100% convinced of that. Just use some examples and be able to show that that is indeed true. So now, that means that we can simplify this even further. Since b is equal to d, we can put in that so this would basically be a b c the one goes in the middle d is equal to b so we got the b's there a b and c okay so now we want to figure out what are the different scenarios that we can get to make all of these odd because we want everything to be odd, right? All the rows, the columns, diagonals, and so on. So that means the first row, a plus b plus c, is has to be odd. How can we do that? Either 1, 1, 1, that'll do it. Uh, uh, 0, 1, 0, that would do it. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And I think that's it, right? Those are the only ways. So based on that, let's fill this in. Let's create the tables. So it looks like we only got four. So let's see if we can put them in and make what these tables look like. OK. So the first one, 1, 1, 1. So that's pretty straightforward. That looks like that's all ones. That's this guy right here. Then 0, 1, 0. So that means A is 0. So 0, 0, C is 0, so 0, 0, and then B is 1, so 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, okay, like that. All right, that's this one. Next one, A is 1, and then looks like everything else is 0, so that kind of a scenario. And then the last one, 
the C is 1, so that's 1, and then everything else is 0. So that scenario. And I believe that's it. So those are the grids that have exactly 8 points, and you can, of course, calculate the sums of the 3 columns, 3 rows, th 2 diagonals, and indeed figure out that all of those sums will be odd. Let ABCD be a parallelogram. We draw in the diagonal AC. A circle is drawn inside AB. Triangle ABC. Tangent to all three sides and touches side AC at point P. Prove that DA plus AP is equal to DC plus CP. All right. Now we have some tangent rules, right? Tangent rules say that if you have a tangent to a certain point and you have a tangent to another similar point, it will be equal. So for example, let's call this tangent point x and let's call this tangent point right here y. So a is a point and when you draw a line from a to that tangent point x and then you draw another line from the same a to another tangent point p, uh, ax and ap are going to be equal. So that's what that means. And very similarly, bx to by, those two are also the same. So that means that this da plus ap, which is what they start off with, we have to show that it equals that. Well, da I will leave alone for now, but ap is the same as ax, right? This is ap, that's a to a tangent point p. It's going to be the same as a to the tangent point x. So this is the same as ax. ap is equal to ax. But ax is really the whole distance a to b minus xb. Correct? So plus ab minus xb. Okay. Now we have to uh, look at the other side, which is this guy right here, DC plus CP. So DC plus CP, in a similar way, we'll leave DC for now, CP is the same as CY for the same reason. And CY is equivalent to CB minus by. Okay. Now, same kind of thing. This by is the same as bx. So this is just dc plus cb minus bx. And this ab is the same as dc. Right, because this is a parallelogram, so that AB is the same as that DC. So this DC is really the same as AB. And then the CB right here, well, that's the same as DA. CB is the same as DA for the same reason. It's a parallelogram. So we can put DA. Well, there you go. This is now the same as this. DA or AAD, whatever, plus AB minus XB, which is the same as BX. So therefore, this equals that. So we can put that in there, that this is equal to DC plus CP. And that's really all they wanted. It's just really a, a combination of all tangent uh, lines and also the sides of the parallelogram. Draw in line DP, a circle of radius R1 is drawn inside DAP. Tangent to all three sides, a circle of radius R2 is drawn inside DCP. Tangent to all three sides, prove that R1 over R2 is equal to AP over PC. All right, so the first thing I want to do is draw a uh, altitude, and hopefully it will be clear as to how that helps us. So I'll just draw a line from D perpendicular to T 
to there approximately, and that will be an altitude. It's perpendicular like that. So the first thing is that the area of triangle APD is one-half base times height. The base I can use AP, and the height I can use as H. That blue line is H. And similarly, the triangle uh, CDP, CDP, or CPD, whichever, CDP, that's going to be also one-half base times height. That base is PC, and the height, interestingly, can also be H. So now when we take a ratio of those two uh, areas, APD over CDP, it becomes one-half AP H over one-half PC H. So it's really just AP over PC because everything else cancels out. Okay, so that's really nice. Okay, so we have to keep our eye on what we have to do here. We have to show this ratio of the two radii is equal to this AP over PC. Okay, so before we get tackle that, I want to show you, uh, generally speaking, what happens with uh, certain questions like this, how you can figure it out. So I'm going to use this triangle to sort of illustrate uh, might as well just use the same triangle. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is draw the radii to the tangent points. And then this one, these are all hitting at right angles. And there we go. Okay, and then I'm going to draw some lines that are connecting the center of that circle to the corners of the triangle like that and that this should help figure out a formula okay so here we go we are told that the radius of these circles are either r1 or r2 but this is just a diagram that i'm trying to explain so i'll just put r for radius and then i want to figure out the area of that whole big circle oh sorry the whole big triangle in this case, it's ABC. Well, we can do it by breaking it up into three triangles. That one, this one, and of course, uh, where's the other one? This one. So here we go. So it'll be one half base times height. For the first triangle, the base is AB. The height is R, right? Because that, that is a tangent point, so that is indeed a right angle. And this is also a right angle. That's also a right angle. And then add to that, the second triangle would be one-half base times height, which would be base is BC, and the height is, again, R. Third triangle, would the base would be AC, and the height would be R. So this would really just be R over 2 times AB plus BC plus AC. Well, AB plus BC plus AC is the perimeter. So it's really R over 2 times P, where P is the perimeter of that triangle. So we are going to use that to try to prove that. So some of you already knew about this kind of formula, but I wanted to show you, uh, you know, why that formula is indeed true. Otherwise, it might seem a bit abstract. Okay, so let's go back to my AP over PC, right? We just showed that it is indeed equal to the ratio of the areas. APD triangle and CPD. And then uh, according to this formula, that's equivalent to R1, which is the radius of APD over 2, times the perimeter of APD. Right? And the perimeter of APD uh, is, where is APD? It would be DA plus AP plus DP, right? So DA plus AP plus PD. And then CDP, according to this formula, would be R2 over 2. And the perimeter of CDP, which would be DC plus CP plus DP. Right. Okay, good. Now, we showed in part A that DA plus AP is equal to DC plus CP. 
So I can put that in this DA plus AP. I can put in uh, DC plus CP. And then the halves cancel. That's why I got rid of the halves. And this is DC plus CP plus DP. Well, DP is the same as PD, right? Well, guess what? The top and bottom, this cancels with that. And all you're left with is just R1 over R2. And we have indeed shown that AP over PC is equal to R1 over R2, which is what we wanted to show right there. Suppose DA plus DC is equal to 3AC and DA is equal to DP. Let R1 and R2 be the two radii defined in part B. Determine the ratio R1 over R2. All right. So I don't think we need a great diagram. Just something basic would be sufficient. So something like that, where this is P. And then I'll just draw a line from there to there. So this was A, if you recall. This was C, and this was D. OK. So they've given us a few clues. The first is that DA plus DC is equal to 3AC, and DA is equal to DP. All right. Now, let's see here. They want you to figure out the ratio R1 over R2. Okay, well, we're going to have to use some of the things that we found out, out, found out already. Part B, we found out that R1 over R2 is equal to AP over PC. Correct? So AP over PC, I'm going to give them some variables. Let's call it X over Y, where AP is X and PC is Y. Okay, that's a pretty good way of starting. And then part A of this question, we had figured out that DA plus AP was equal to DC plus CP. And I'm going to call that S. And when I substitute values of X and Y, I get DA plus X is equal to DC plus Y. And that equals S. So that means that DA is equal to S minus X, and DC is equal to S minus Y. Okay, now let's take a look at how that will help us. They're saying that DA plus DC is equal to 3AC. So that means that S minus X plus S minus Y is equal to 3 times AC would be X plus Y. Correct? Looking at the diagram. So simplifying this, this would be 2s minus x minus y is equal to 3x plus 3y. Therefore, 2s is equal to 4x plus 4y. And therefore, s is equal to 2x plus 2y. OK. So that takes care of that part. Now we go back to the diagram, and I'm going to draw uh, a line because DA is equal to DP, right? So that means that this is an isosceles triangle. So if I draw a line that's perpendicular, that that's going to cut AP in half. So if I call that point M, that means that M is the midpoint of AP. And that's just the property of isosceles triangles, that if you draw a perpendicular, it will cut the other half in half, other side in half. So MP, therefore, would be x over 2, since AP is x. Now we just have to use Pythagorean theorem a couple times. Um, the first one will be uh, this big triangle right here, that right triangle. So that will give me that MD squared plus MC squared is equal to DC squared. And then the other one, I'll just use a smaller one, that one, that MD squared plus MP squared is equal to DP squared. Like that. So for both of these, we can isolate for MD, which is DC squared minus MC squared. 
and then for this one dp squared minus mp squared so if you set them equal to each other since we have a, both of them equal to md squared we get dc squared minus mc squared is equal to dp squared minus mp squared all right so now it's time to substitute as much as we can dc uh, is this one here so that's going to be uh, let me write it over here dc s minus y so that's going to be 2x plus y yeah and then da s minus x so x plus 2y okay so let's substitute that in so 2x plus y all squared minus mc and mc is x over 2 plus y if you look at the diagram up there dp dp is the same as da and the da is there so that's going to be x plus 2y all squared minus mp which is x over 2 squared all right so we boil it down to that equation Expand and simplify, and we get 4x squared plus 4xy plus y squared minus x squared over 4 minus xy minus y squared is equal to x squared plus 4xy plus 4y squared minus x squared over 4. A lot of this cancels out. Uh, let's see here. The 4xy's go the x squared over x squared over 4 goes uh, what else goes here the y squared is cancelled so all you're left with here is 3x squared minus xy minus 4y squared is equal to 0 and I think this factors nicely 3x x 4y y minus plus so that means that 3x minus 4y is equal to 0 because x plus y can't be equal to 0 because that would mean x is equal to negative y and x and y are lengths so that can't be possible. So this means that 3x is equal to 4y, x over y is equal to 4 over 3. And that is what they wanted because we had shown, shown that uh, x over y is 4 over 3 and that basically is what they wanted us to show. So this is essentially the, the the equation that puts it all together for any positive integer n an n tuple of positive integers x1 x2 dot 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 to xn is said to be super squared if it satisfies both of the following properties x1 greater than x2 so on and the sum x1 squared plus x2 squared so on is a perfect square for every k every k between 1 and n inclusive for example, 12, 9, 8 is a super squared because 12 is greater than 9 is greater than 8. And each of 12 squared, 12 squared plus 9 squared, 12 squared plus 9 squared plus 8 squared is our perfect squares. Determine all values of k or t such that 32 t and 9 is super squared. Okay. If this is super squared, the first condition is that 32 has to be greater than t has to be greater than 9. Second condition is that 32 squared has to be perfect square, 32 plus t squared has to be a perfect square, and 32 squared plus t squared plus 9 squared has to be a perfect square. Well, 32 squared is a perfect square. We already know that. So this has to be a perfect square, so I'll call it a squared, and this I'll call b squared. Okay. So let's work with this. So if I subtract b squared minus a squared will just be uh, 9 squared. Yeah. So that means 81 is equal to, and this factors, b, b, a, a, minus plus. So 81 is equal to b minus a times b plus a. And the only way we can do that is either 81 for b plus a and 1 for b minus a, or 27 for b plus a and 3 for b minus a. Those are the only ways. So let's work with the first one. If we have oh, the 1 and 81 situation, that means b plus a is equal to 81, and b minus a is equal to 1. If you add these, you get 2b is equal to 82, and therefore b is equal to 41. Sub it back into either one of those, and you get a is equal to 40. Okay, so let's figure out t. t would therefore be, if we use 
let's say that formula a squared minus 32 squared under the square root sign and when you substitute a equal to 40 you get 40 squared minus 32 squared and when you do that math it gets to 24 so 24 is one such answer t equals 24 okay now let's look at this scenario let's see if that gives us any kind of value for t if b plus a is equal to 27 and b minus a is equal to 3 adding we get 2b is equal to 30 that means b is 15 sub that back into either one of these and you get a equal to 12 so that means now t is equal to a squared minus 32 squared as before and that would mean 12 squared minus 32 squared but that gives me no real solution right because you'd have a negative you'd have a negative under the radical sign so it looks like the only value of t that works is 24. Then you can verify this. Go back, substitute in, into these equations and verify that they are indeed perfect squares. And you'll find they are. When you substitute t equals 24 into this guy here, it will give you uh, 40 squared. And when you substitute t equals 24 into here, you will get 41 squared for a squared and b squared. So there you have it.